Hey, howdy everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Or if this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. I suspect I may get a few new people from this video because this is a little bit of a far cry from what I usually do. However, even though I am a Metal React channel primarily, I wanted to do something that's not metal just to showcase some of the music that I love that isn't metal. And one of my favorite artists who I discovered recently, uh, recently being last year, Gracie Abrams, she dropped a new album. Her previous album, Good Riddance, was one of my favorite albums of last year. If you saw my video on my top albums of that whole last year. <laughs> now I'm going to check out her new album, The Secret of Us. So she is, she's, she's a pop artist who does a lot of interesting melodies and harmonies and just a bunch of really cool stuff and her voice is super unique and she's she's just really really good so i wanted to wanted to do a reaction video to this album and you know it if you're seeing this already but this whole video will be on just the youtube channel i'm not gonna put this on patreon because i'm just assuming that most of my patreon audience does not want to see this so i'm gonna <laughs> put it here and maybe other people will see it and get interested in my stuff who knows i want to do more non-metal reactions as well i'm gonna do the new 21 pilots album which is metal adjacent a lot of people in the metal community like 21 pilots but i'm gonna do that one and then i also want to check out the new billy eilish album as well let me know if there's any other good albums that are not metal that I should check out. But those are the three that I'm planning on doing currently. So let's get into this. So I can give my thoughts on this and you can see what I think about this. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go over this thing here. So look at looking at the track list. It's about it's 40 47 48 minutes there's 13 tracks one of them features taylor swift now i don't really like taylor swift but it's more so just that i think her her songwriting or like the songs that she sings just aren't really that interesting to me i don't know something about the way her songs are maybe it's the chord progressions maybe it's just the, the overall atmosphere, the tone of them, I don't know, something just doesn't resonate with me, but Gracie's music really does. So I am interested to hear that track with Taylor singing on Gracie's track, because Taylor has a really good voice, it's just I don't really like her music, it's the, the only thing. So, we'll see. Oh, uh, I should probably also mention, for people who might be new, I am a music teacher. I primarily teach piano and voice, but I also do a bunch of other lessons as well. I've got some violin students. I've got a couple guitar students. Uh, I also have taught other instruments in the past, clarinet, flute. Uh, those students all either left or <laughs> moved to piano because they thought those instruments were too hard. Um, but it's mostly younger students. So I, I do have some older students, but it's mostly like like elementary, middle school, a couple of high school, but mostly in that age range. So I am used to music. I'm around music all the time. I teach music. I'm a classically trained musician, all that kind of stuff. But I just love all music, really. If it's good, I'll listen to it. That's my, that's my motto. So I'm not going to write off an entire genre just because I, I might not like it. Right? There's something that I like in every genre, I'm pretty sure. So if you have something in some genre that you think I won't like, or you have like a genre that you think I won't like, challenge me. Challenge me, I wanna hear it. I also do live streams where I take uh, viewer requests. They're currently free. If I get too many requests, I'm gonna start charging you like a couple bucks just to send a request in, just to kind of regulate it a little bit. But those live streams are uh, free for right now so go check out my twitch twitch.tv slash Corey clip I think I'll, I'll edit it into the, the little black part of the the keyboard down there so go check that out if you're interested also in the description you can find a link to that you can also find a link to two of my playlists if you go to linktree there's a heavy music playlist and like a less heavy music playlist just everyday listening kind of stuff there is some metal in there but that playlist is predominantly non-metal so go check out that if you want to know other stuff I listen to uh, as well as just, you know, you can follow me on Instagram, you can follow me on TikTok, uh, Twitter, sorry, X, although I'm not as active on there, but go check that out if you are interested. And if you want to support me, my Patreon's in there as well, but that's, you know, optional. All right, let's get into this. 
I'm excited. I'm hyped to check this out. I uh, I love Gracie Abrams. Let's go. What you got for me? Hey, editing Corey here. Every single song in this video got blocked, so I now have to go back and I have to edit out all of the sounds and all of the music in the video. So this video on YouTube here is just going to be straight up me talking about it. None of me actually reacting to the music. If you want to see that, go to the link in the, desc the description. I am uploading it to my Patreon for free for everybody. It's it's free. So please, please, please don't watch this video if you want to see me, my reaction to the actual songs. Go watch the video in the link in the description. It's free. You don't have to pay me anything. It's on my Patreon. Go look at that very big first link in the description. It's right there. Go click on it. Go watch that video instead. But be sure to like this video just for the algorithm. Thank you. Already banger atmosphere. Let's go. Felt good about you. Already great first track. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of glad it didn't go into uh, a more instrumental, bigger section towards the end. I'm glad it stayed short and sweet in, in this weird space. My favorite part about this was the atmosphere, and this is something that Gracie does so well in all of her music, especially on Good Riddance. That album is is incredible. But here you can hear that weird sort of like. It's like a pulsing like doo -doo 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 and if you hear it with good headphones it sounds really weird because it's really bassy but it feels like I, I don't know how to describe it it feels strange it feels like your your ears are like going in and out of you know that feeling when um like the the pressure switch when you're driving through mountains or like on an airplane or something it feels like that but like it's constantly going in and out between that and it gives it like a weird sort of feeling to listening to it which a lot of music doesn't really like physically affect you but this does it's really interesting it's 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 great production but you have like this weird really bassy drum part underneath that's like super muted it's super in the in the low ends it's really really interesting and then very slightly there's an electric guitar that comes in somewhere here Actually, I think it's a bass. I think it's just a bass playing high. Listen, listen to this part. You'll hear it. Do you hear that? There's that part going on. That's super, super cool. And I love the way that the song builds still without getting too crazy over the top towards the end. So it doesn't explode. It could have, it could have gone into something where like bring more instruments and make it a bigger sound. But it keeps it soft and it works really, really well as an intro track. Super, super cool. I also love the way her vocals start off. They're very close. They're very soft. She does that very well. That's her her sort of her thing. Um, and then, then you get to hear, and there's a little bit of harmony, and the vocals start to feel a little bit bigger. They start to open up a little bit more. You have one vocal track where she's really, really close to the ear, and then one where she's further away harmonizing when it gets to this part, and like the tambourine comes in. And it gives it more of like a bigger chorus effect and those vocals just stand out even more great progression great songwriting great first track <laughs> let's keep going okay i have heard risk i love risk this is this is one of my favorite songs of the year so far and i'm interested to see if any of the songs on here can top it uh when she when she dropped this track i listened to it i i've heard the song so many times love this song um I didn't hear the other single she dropped because when it came out, uh, well, I, I, I should kind of preface this. I found Gracie through one of my voice students who recommended her to me. And uh, she told me that Gracie dropped a new single and I was like, oh, really? And, and then I also noticed that she was dropping an album like a week later or something at the time that I found this out. So I was like, I'll just wait for the album. So now I'm checking it out. <laughs> so I've, I've heard the song before. I love it. Great song. So I'm just gonna let you guys listen to it and I'll talk about why it's so good afterwards. Oh wait, sorry, hang on. Actually, no, I'm gonna go back to this. I'm, I'm gonna go back to this. And I'm gonna talk about... I'm gonna talk about this, okay. Um, I, I have to preface this. I didn't talk about the, the chords. Sometimes I get so caught up in like the music themselves, I forget to talk about, you know, the what's actually going on in the music. Um, I am very opinionated when it comes to keys. I don't like albums that are in a consistent key the whole time or like 
stay too much in the same key and feel too much the same. That's been one of my big criticisms with albums in the past. There's been a few that I listen to that people say are really good, but it really just bothers me when they're in the same key or like the same tuning and with like guitar songs. Like it's it's just something that I've I've criticized a lot in the past. And I'm going to repeat myself a lot for people who've seen my past videos. I'm going to say a lot of stuff I've said before, but it's more so just for any new people who are here checking this out. That's one of the things that kind of annoys me a little bit. And the key of C as a piano teacher, I despise because I hear it all the time and it sounds a little bit boring. However, there are some songs where you can do the key of C and you can do it really, really well. And it doesn't sound boring and it sounds great. And this is one of them. This is in the key of C or A minor, I guess you could say too. So with the chord progression here, it's actually super simple. Let me just try to, I don't know, find a spot and just, just take a listen. Let me go to where it's, uh, let me go to where it's a little bit bigger around here. Yeah, so it's generally just A minor, F, C, G. It's usually just those four chords. However, it's the production and the atmosphere that makes it so interesting. And also there's a lot of like little, little, um, spice chords in there or like spicy notes so listen to like uh this for example There's a little high part that sounds like a violin or something going like on the top it goes. There's there's some higher part that's playing some stuff up there and it just adds a little bit extra spice into these chords. Beautiful. Especially that chord. A four chord is my favorite chord in, in any song, really. And especially if you go from like a six to like a four seven or a four major nine. Ugh. It's, it's just so beautiful. And it acts as a sort of consistent chord that keeps going and then it becomes tension because of the chord progression and then it resolves like you have this i'm just going to make this a a seven here so we have all all these notes and then if you add in the f here then go to the next chord now it's just in the normal triad then you go down to the here and it becomes tension and then it resolves And it creates just a beautiful atmosphere, especially with this production and with the weird sounds that I was talking about with the boop, 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 like those consistent 16ths throughout. So cool. Anyway, let's get to Risk. I've heard this one, but it's a banger. Banger song. All right. So what makes this so good, again, the production, there's that consistent guitar going like back and forth, like half of it's in your right ear, half of it's in your left ear, and it's just, it goes throughout the entire song. It's it's so cool. And the way it builds throughout is really, really sick too, because you've got just the guitar in the beginning, and then it builds to like, you get a little bit of drum and some bass coming in here. And then it drops out again, and it's, it's just the kick drum that's going. You just have that. Gets a little bit bigger, thicker instrumentation here. And then, towards the end, you have this little bridge part. And then you have this, like, this snare build up into the last chorus here. And the snare keeps building and building and building and building. And building. And it just ends.
<laughs> so it has this feeling of sort of like it's it's building to something, but it never reaches there. And it just, it keeps going, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going, it snares building, ooh, ooh, ooh. Because usually when you have a part like that, it's like the the snare is building to something and then psh, and you have more stuff going to happen in the drums, but it doesn't. It just releases to the end. It's so cool. She does something really, really cool here. Well, in most of her songs. But in this song especially, because I've heard this before, I'm going to talk about it. She sort of like flips really quickly between notes like if you go to like the very beginning um it, you have like ooh, oh my goodness sorry so it's like a really quick like da -da 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 -ba -ba -ba. there's really like fast these fast switches between notes and it works really really well with the overall song and the production another thing just songwriting wise the song isn't the key here of g flat major or you can think f sharp major but we never actually reach that one chord. It stays here on the four, the six, the five, the six, the four. does that the whole song it never gets to the one and it has a whole feeling of tension throughout the entire song because of that it's really cool this bridge part where she has the da -da 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 that whole part there if you look chord wise this is our first chord b major chord and the notes she's singing are so she's emphasizing these two non-chord tones when you add it to the chord creates a really cool cluster chord like that then it goes to and then these these are still cluster chord tones they're still non chord tones because the, the chord is this and she's singing so this note stays a chord tone just like it did here because then we go up to this chord but these two are still non chord tones and then we resolve to the four chord. And then this, which was previously the chord tone in the previous two chords, now becomes a non-chord tone. And the other two chord tones that are... They are now part of the chord. And then she switches to this, just straight up all chord tones here. She has some some of this in there too, and instead of just this, adds another note in there, and then she has It's so cool. I love this song. I love <laughs> I love all her music. See, this is this is what makes really good pop music. All right, let's keep going. Man, she's such a good artist, dude. Okay. So here, we're in the key of G sharp minor right here. So like, this is this first chord, then it goes to this, then it goes to... And I've talked about this in other videos, but in case you're new and you haven't seen this, I love this chord progression. So this is one chord to three to a six. Or if we're talking major, this is like a, a 6 to a 1 to a 4. Because G minor and B are relative major and minor. Uh, if you want to know about that, I have a music theory series on my Patreon you can check out. Anyway, <laughs> I promise I'll make more episodes on that. Uh, this song 
so so good the this one might be my new favorite like i said so mainly what's happening here this is like so good because of the chord progression because it's one of my favorite chord progressions and what happens here is these chords all share notes so the first chord you have you get that then the next chord is this then the next chord is this so this this b here is a common note in all of these chords And if you keep some of the notes from the other chords, which she does here, this is a seventh chord, and you can have that as a normal triad, but then you go down to here, turns this into a major nine chord. So beautiful. And then the melody, of course, we've got I can't I can't play apparently. It's so beautiful. This starter note here, which is kind of a focus. It creates this dark tension with this chord. Because there's this, there's this half step dissonance with the, the third of this chord. But if you have dissonance like that, throw it up an octave or put it in a vocal line, and it sounds beautiful. It doesn't sound like dissonance, it just makes the chord sound cooler. So that's, that's how you do that. Beautiful. And then we go to the one chord here. Or like the this the one to the three in a if we're going based off of B major, this is six to one. And that's a four. But the KG sharp minor here is a one to three to six. So this chord here. This turns this into a nine. Which then makes this a major seven chord. And then when it changes to this chord, to the sixth chord, this then becomes the major seven of that chord. Sorry, the nine. I, I mean, not the seven, the nine. And it just, it adds so many interesting notes to these chords by just slapping on extra thirds instead of just the normal triads. Like, take that chord, just add more thirds on top of it. It just sounds so cool. That's how you make these big sounding beautiful sounding crunchy sounding chords but also not crunchy but beautiful like have have that half step dissonance have these things happening but throw them an octave apart put some thirds in the middle 
Man, it's beautiful. It's so good. I got the melody wrong a little bit, but you know, it's the same idea. All right, let's keep going. That was a shorter song. I gotta be honest, I didn't like this one as much, but the melody choices saved it. The chords, the harmony, it's pretty basic. We're in the key of B flat here. <clears throat> it goes from one to five. <clears throat> it goes from one to five. You didn't see anything. Then to the two, to the four. thing I want to talk about is just the I love you I'm sorry that's such a good melody choice I am a huge sucker for fifth jumps like that when you have fifth jumps in a song I love it <laughs> a lot of the other songs on this album so far have had those fifth jumps I just haven't really talked about it because there's been so much else to talk about and I forgot so let me talk about that now fifth jumps are great I don't know what it is about them, but they are like the the cheat code for melody writing for me. If you want me to like a song, add some fifth jumps, I will love it automatically. Even if the rest of the song sucks. <laughs> Maybe not. But anyway, it, but it's like that paired with that chord right there. Because this note, the I love you, I'm sorry, this specific one, here and here, the two main notes of that little melodic passage right there, this is a non-chord tone, because the chord here is this E-flat major chord, and that's this, as a little, little two in there. And then going, I love you, I'm sorry, so, so, do, do, ti, do, this little T, the seventh in the. In the overall key that we're in, this little seventh in the melody. This. This is one of my favorite things. Which is a tritone. <laughs> And the tragedy is widely considered the ugliest interval just because it sounds horrible. Doesn't it sound awful? Like, you have that, especially as you play it lower, disgusting. Add it in with a really cool... I don't know, it's something like that, and it sounds great. So that, the fifth jump paired with that little tritone there that it creates with the chord, it just, I don't know, that, that unlocks something in my brain that's like, I love this. And one of my favorite examples of uh, tritone, I'm going to pull this up for you so you can hear it, I believe it is... Uh, it's either 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. from Animal Crossing New Leaf. So let me let me show this. I think it's this. I'm gonna try 7 p.m. Yep. All right. You guys can't see this. Uh, I pulled it up on YouTube. But just just listen to this. This piano part. Oh my goodness! I, I dude, I can't play it. Listen to how this piano sounds and then listen when the chords come in because it's not where you think it is because this note it's going to be in a tritone with the chord if you play animal crossing new leaf you know this but It's so beautiful. I don't want to play too much of that because I'm going to get copyrighted by Nintendo, and as it is, I'm probably going to have to uh, take on the video now. 
<laughs> so I'm going to cut that out if that becomes an issue. I hope this doesn't get copyrighted. I hope I can put this video out. My goodness. Uh, dude, because I have a lot to talk about. But I also have a lot to talk about outside of the song. So if all the songs get copyrighted, I can just cut out the song part and then just show the talking about it part, which is going to suck for you guys, but whatever. We'll see. This might not even happen, and this conversation is just going to be irrelevant. Anyway, it has this tritone with the chord. That's my favorite example of using a melody like that, a tritone melody, to make it even better. It creates this tension here on the four chord. And then we go to the one chord. And then this chord becomes a major seven. And the tension is gone. And then it goes back. Beautiful. That's one of the best video game soundtracks ever. And that's mainly why I love this part. It's just that. <laughs> There's another part here, too. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to find it. Give me one second. All right, I can't find it. Sorry. Um, I don't know if it's just not sticking out to me or what, but overall, really, really good. Dude, I can't talk today. I can't talk any today. In these videos, I'm just like, sometimes I'll just say random things and my words will sound like blah, 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 and then it just happens. You know, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. There's something up with me, man. I just, I have no idea. Anyway, great song, great melodies. Uh, I just think it's not quite as good as the others. That's all. Still great, but it's my least favorite so far. Let's keep going. All right. That one overall, that, that was, that was a weird song. I'm, I'm conflicted about this one. Because here we're, we're in the key of G, and largely the song was doing a, a 1 to 4 to 5, which is usually not a chord progression I like. And I think that brought the song down a little bit for me. Also, it felt a little long. I think some of the chorus parts, like maybe you could have chopped off one of the, the chorus endings towards the end or something. It was, it just, it just kind of kept going a little bit. Overall, I liked it. I just think this might be my least favorite now it's like before you before it was this like this is my least favorite than this the first three are really really good though the best part of this was the bridge when you get to uh where was i, I have no idea the part where i said there it is yeah here we go okay the best part of that was oh my goodness i had to take a break and then i <clears throat> come on okay all right okay we're back we're back we're back it's fine so it's doing that the whole time. Then it goes to the sixth chord. So finally, that part felt really unique. I would have really, really liked more of that chord progression, adding the six into there, because the one, the four, and the five are all major chords in a major key, and adding the six in there adds a dark minor chord in there, and it just sounds so much better with that chord in there. And then they just continued... The part that I I wish that they would have kept that chord progression and saying the same thing, you can just keep the same melody, but just add that six chord in there and leave that and keep it through to the end. It would have made it feel different and super, super cool. That's, I think, the only thing that's holding it back from being one of the better songs, in my opinion, because this is really, really good. And then the six to the one down to the four you can hear it go down to the four instead of going up to the four so it adds this sense of like it's going down which makes it sound a little bit a little bit sadder a little bit of a, a more somber chord progression i would have liked more of that that would have made the song much better for me. But yeah, it did feel a little bit long. And a four minute song feeling a little bit long isn't uh, the best sign. <laughs> Especially because a lot of the songs that I listen to, a lot of the music in general that I listen to has 
a lot of longer songs. When a four minute song drags, it's a little bit of a little, little bit of a shame. Yeah, I think that's my least favorite song, but not bad by any means. Still better than average. All right, let's keep going. I've been recording for like, I, it's, I'm 52 minutes into this video and I am currently like, what, what is this? Maybe, maybe 15, maybe 20 minutes of, no, not, not even 20 minutes of music. This is, this is like 15 minutes of music. I've been yapping for like 30 minutes of this time that I've been recording. <laughs> hey, it's, it, it's good. Good albums make me do this. Ah, uh, but dude, I still have, um, what is this? So eight more tracks to go. Yeah, I got to keep going. All right, enough of that. Enough of that. Shut up, Corey. Let's go. Yes. And we're back. I wonder if Taylor wrote more of this song than Gracie did. Because this has Taylor Swift isms in some of the melody and the chords and the way that the lyrics flow. I talk about this a lot in other videos, but lyrics are like the content of the lyrics. I don't care. I don't care about the contents of the lyrics. They can be good, they can be bad, they can be cringe, they can be genius, whatever. I usually don't care. It's not the content that that bothers me if it's like weird, it's the the flow of it. And the flow of some of the stuff in here, I didn't talk about this, but the flow of one lyric in particular, it's the Babylon part. Where where is that? Here. Babylon. that part there babylon lovers hang in miss calls on the line like all of the accented syllables are wrong it's babylon lovers hanging missed calls on the line and those accents really bother me when they're not on the correct syllables in the way that you would talk so if you just say that you would accent like the first syllable of most of those words babylon lovers hanging missed calls on the line. It's, it's got that cadence to it. Babylon lovers hanging missed calls on the line. Like that. But she accents it like Babylon lovers hanging missed calls on the line. And it just feels really off. And that's something that Taylor Swift does and that's part of why I don't like her songwriting as much. She does that in quite a few of her songs. And for some people it's not a big deal. For me, it is. I'm primarily a singer and it bothers me when singers do that. Then you compare that with every other song on this album, and it doesn't have that. Every other song on this album, the lyrics are so, so well written, and the cadence of it all flows super, super well with the music, and none of it feels awkward or out of place. So that's what makes me think that Taylor Swift had more of an influence on the writers, or on, from, like, from a writing standpoint on that song, or maybe even she just wrote that lyric or something, or I, I don't know what they did. Um, other than they, they like burnt cookies or something and set the house on fire. I don't know. I just saw that on Gracie's Instagram story, but <laughs> I'm like, like, why is it? I, I didn't expect to see Taylor Swift and, and uh, Gracie Abrams burning cookies together, but you know, it, it is what it is. And they're like freaking out trying to put it out. Anyway, that was funny. But this song, it just cemented in my head that yeah, Gracie is such a really, really good songwriter because of the lyrical stuff, mostly. It's the lyrical stuff, it's the melodies, and it's the chords, and it's the atmosphere and the production. And I know that the, um, I think she has the same producer as Taylor Swift, so that's not the issue. So it's got to be Taylor Swift that's the issue. <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't hate her. I just don't really like her songwriting. Gracie, however, great songwriter. All of these lyrics, so super good. Let me let me find the chorus. That first part already, it does one of my favorite things in music in general, which is when you take a melody that's really, really good, even just a super simple melody that's just solid, and you take it and you do it again, but with a different chord, and you sort of change up the vibe of it. So it starts with... Sorry. So here we're starting with the one chord, then we go to the four chord, G major chord, C major chord.
That part right there is so good because it takes that. There you go, simple melody in the key of G. Put that under a C chord and it makes it a C major seven. Again, it's, it's those tall chords. It's those tall chords that are so good. And then this song, you'd think it would go one, four, six, five, one, four, six, five. Maybe throw a five in there, but it doesn't. It goes one, four, six, four, one, four, six, four. And it's, it, ah, 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 not a five. I, I messed up. And it turns that common chord progression on its head and goes back to the four instead. So it's sort of like subverting your expectations of what's going to happen. Uh, let me play this part again. I might be yes, that part. That may be like the third or fourth time that that's happened on this channel. <laughs> where I play a chord and I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I just have to do it. I'm sorry. Uh, this whole chord here, I need to play this again because I forgot because I got focused on Still Dre. Yes. That's such a strange melody. And it's using a lot of non-chord tones, this one, that one, into the seventh chord. Oops. Uh, anyway, that is such a fun melody. It takes a lot of those non-chord tones and does like weird jumps and stuff with it. And it, it's non, it's like not a very conventional melody at all, as most of Gracie's melodies are. Even though the chords are fairly common and it's the same chords throughout and it's not that tricky harmonically, it's the way that these songs are structured and the melodies and her voice and the production, and just the sound of all these songs, the different atmospheres that they create with the, the production and the sounds. It's not just the same instruments and the same sounds over and over again. Each sound, each, you know, I can't talk, each song sounds different. It's really, really interesting, and that's what makes her music so unique, in my opinion. Let's keep going. Another banger track. I'm sorry, I, I have to pause, but like, this part here, even though it's fast, it's it's got this rhythm to it. It just it goes. Now, if this is a Taylor Swift song, I guarantee there'd be a lot of weird syllabic things happening. Not so here. This is a Gracie Abrams song. We write words correctly in this household. Check this out. Listen to this again. I'm gonna start this over again. So pay attention to these lyrics. Listen to how they flow. Listen to how natural it sounds. None of the syllables that are accented sound wrong. They're all correctly accented. They're all in the right spot. It just sounds really, really good. Pretty solid song. Overall, I'd say that's that's one of the the lesser, lesser, stronger songs on the album, kind of along with Us and I Love You, I'm Sorry. That one I didn't like as much, but it was still pretty good. So it again, that one, it's in the key of C, just like the first song. And the whole chord progression is the verse is it's, it's going like this and it's going between six five four five six 
five, a four, and it, it has this feeling of anxiousness to it because it doesn't go to the one. Remember when I said, what was it with risk? I think, I think it was risk where risk was just like four, six, five, four, six, five. It was four, six, five. But in this key, this is kind of the same thing for this part, except it's just going back and forth and it's kind of rocking back and forth, stepping between these three chords. And then it hits the one when it goes to the chorus. Now, the main thing that makes me not like this song as much is there's not as many really cool melody stuff like non chord tones, because a lot of the melody is like. Now this, this is a fifth jump. I, this fifth jump is pretty good, but I think it, it doesn't really work all that much. Even though it is a non-chord tone and it creates this like nice two feel with the four chord, and then you've got you've got like those chords. I still think it doesn't really work for me. Sorry, but that's just kind of how I'm, I'm I'm feeling. It's it's not as unique as some of her other songs, and I'm not always the biggest fan of songs that stay on one note and just keep going like that. But if songs do it really well then I love it. Take, for example, Granite by Sleep Token. Go listen to that song. Go check that out if you want to hear a song that's really, really good with one note that keeps going. And then, as well, this song off of last year's album, Best, this song does it better. The, the first track here. I thought good riddance. This song has... This song does that single note melody better as well. So Gracie's done it better before. I'm just not really a fan of that song. Still pretty good. I'm going to keep moving on, though. Let's look at the next one. Ugh, I'm finally about halfway done with this album. I'm not saying, uh, as in, I don't want to hear more of this. Oh my god, I have to listen to more. No, I'm saying, uh, as in, I, <laughs> I've been recording for over an hour, and I'm still halfway through this album. I've listened to, like, 20 minutes of music in an hour. Anyway. Let's keep going. Mm, wow. That that may be the best song on the album. That tempo switch was crazy. I was not expecting something like that. So here, we're in the key of E flat major, and we've got... Oh my goodness. Wow. This whole song is so well written. It's not just a four chord song. This is this is her getting out of her comfort zone with songwriting and doing more than just writing a three or four chord song and then coming up with some good melodies and stuff. The whole song is so well thought out. Throughout the entire thing, there's always something new happening. There's something engaging. This is an over four minute song that is better than us. Um, <laughs> where I complained that us dragged for the four minutes. This one really really good and most of these songs are over four minutes but i this song especially felt a little bit longer in a good way because it did its thing it kept going and then it had a switch up right when you think it's going to end and become just another like barely three minute song and it had a little switch up and then the tempo change happened and it kept going it, 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 wow i i don't know what else to say i think this is the best song in the album at least so far she might top it with one of these last few songs, but this is the best song so far. That's great. That's such good songwriting. This whole part. This 
that little part especially is probably my favorite melody on this track because it does the thing that I said before where you take a melody and then you change the chords underneath it and have that same melody and it works so so well here this melody part such a good melody i can't exactly explain what is so good about it i didn't mean to hit that but it kind of made it jazzy didn't it anyway that <laughs> that's incredible it does a little thing where it like it plays around with these two non-chord tones and these two chord tones because that chord is this. And then this chord, when it goes to here, because this chord is basically an extension of this chord, add another third on the bottom. The same two chord, or the same two notes, stay chord tones, and then these two are non chord tones. It works so well. This is the best song on the album so far. I gotta keep going. Very interesting song. I don't know what to think of that. I think I liked it. But I'm not sure. It did a really good job of that atmosphere that she's really good at. Those synths that are just constantly going in the background. They're just constantly held and they're just kind of like, they're the core of the song. She's always got some instrument or some rhythmic thing or something that continues through the whole song while it builds and, and ebbs and flows. There's always one thing that's like a consistent throughout all of it, be it like a guitar line or a, a, a 16th rhythm or like this, where it's those long synth parts. Really, really cool. I think this is going to be a grower for me. Overall... I said it before, it takes a lot for me to like a song in the key of C, just because I'm very opinionated about keys, and this is in the key of C, and I think I am a little bit iffy on it on first listen, but I still really enjoyed it. I think because it's a slower song, it's more of just a vibe song, this will work better when I'm not sitting here actively listening, analyzing it. I'll like this more when I'm just sitting in my car listening to it. Sorry. Because it's mainly just like these chords just over and over again. So it's very, it's very just slow and like a, a slow kind of song. It's a, it's slow and it's a slow kind of song, you know, I, that's all I got to say. Let me keep going before I run out of things to say and I just yeah myself into an early grave. Cool. I, I really liked parts of this one. Surprisingly, I think the chords and the melodies were the least interesting part. The instrumentals and the way that the different instruments and the different sounds were put together was my favorite part of this track. The weird, like, unexpected bass, like, drum part coming in was really weird. I thought it was just going to be a slow song. And then it came in and I was like, oh, this is like, a secret more upbeat song <laughs> but if you just take the beat and not ever bring it in just have it kind of there in the background have it like you know like at a concert if you're in the bathroom and you still hear it like bumping in the background like that's kind of what this felt like it was that kind of feeling like you hear it from the next room over but it, it's very soft like boom 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 and it's doing that sort of thing throughout that was really sick and then the beautiful little strings over the top of everything that was cool 
I do think that the melodies were a little bit not as good as some of the other ones. They're still good, but they just didn't grab me like some other songs did. Like, um, what was the one I really liked? I Knew It, I Know You. That one? Banger. Great melodies, great everything. That and Risk and Blowing Smoke, I think, are my favorite three so far. Let's finish it off. Let's listen to these last three tracks, and I'll give my final thoughts. I feel like this song is going to be a grower, too, for me. This song was kind of uh, similar to the last song, where it was like... Not the last song. Gave You Eye, this one. Similar to that one, where it's sort of just like... Very similar throughout. There were some really, really good changes. I loved that little melody line he right on the here, maybe. Of the plain and the lakes and the sky. No. You can go home at night and you right here, yep. Really not need her. So you have... That melody switch up there is great. It's so beautiful. It takes... This is just an arpeggio going down on the one chord. One chord arpeggio. Here's your one chord. Bump, 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 bump. There's your arpeggio. And it's that same thing of taking a melody and then playing it on a different chord, usually going down a third or up a third. And it's so, it's so beautiful. That's just, that's one of my favorite things. It's something that Gracie does a lot. And I, I love it. <laughs> when you take that. And then at the very end, you've got that little, like, that tritone. Again, think back to Animal Crossing. Except that's in this key, but you know, it's that same little tritone that just happens very slightly. Really not need her, and it just kind of da da, and it settles into that, and then it's back to the six. No, the one. Never mind. Okay, back to the one. Who cares? I don't. Moving on. Wow, that song was great. The progression of that from beginning to end, the way it built, the way those drums came in, and then they kind of like, they built a bit, and then instead of building to like a bigger part, they built to like a release, but it didn't completely release. It kept going, and it had momentum to it, and then it kept going until the slight release at the very end. That was gorgeous. Like I said, those melodies reminded me of Phoebe Bridgers, and she's another one who writes insanely good melodies. She's so good. Her songwriting is incredible as well. I I don't know. I the, something about this song didn't grab me as much. I think if it was in a different key, I would have liked it more because it's another one of the the C songs. I really liked the first track that was in the key of C, and that was like super super good. But some of the other C songs in this album, I think this is the third or fourth. Some of the other ones just don't grab me as much i think if this if you put this in like d flat or something i would have liked it a lot more sorry oh, that's not right <laughs> i don't know that's just me though that's just a me thing i keep bumping my mic can i maybe not do that anyway let's continue still a very good song and that's the album wow overall very impressed. That last track, it was way more of a traditional pop song than like a singer-songwriter pop song, which is what Gracie mostly does. I really did like it though. It was really well done. The melodies were super good. I don't know, it just it it, it felt very different from the other songs on this album, but in a good way. A lot of the songs in this album are kind of sad about like lost love and like weird weird situations being in and like i don't know i can't speak now for some reason but that last one was much more of like a happier ending track for the album so i'll 
I'll have to think about it as like a closer because I'm not sure how well it works as a closer. I liked how, oh my goodness, I like how Free Now ended and then it, it worked really well. If this was the end of the album, I think that would have been a great closer. This is a closer. I'm a little bit conflicted. It's a really good song, but I don't know if it works as a closer. I think it would have worked more in the middle, but it also could work if I give it a few more listens and I kind of think about it and maybe I will like it more as a closer because the rest of the album is depressing or something like I, I don't know. We'll see. Overall, really good album. There were some things that I didn't like. Like I mentioned, there were like the little, little, little melody things here and there. Uh, I do think the song with Taylor Swift is the weakest because it has some Taylor Swift isms that I mentioned I didn't like, and I don't dislike all Taylor Swift isms. The um, the thing where she like slides between notes that I mentioned in that one song, I forgot which one it was, but that is one of the things I I do like about her songwriting, I, or about her voice, I guess. I just I don't really like some of her chord writings and just some of her melody choices, and I heard some of that in Us, so pretty sure she had some some writing influence on that all the other songs were really really good even though some of them i thought weren't as good as some of the others i think blowing smoke is probably my favorite no no, no uh i knew it i know you is probably my favorite then blowing smoke then risk then felt good about you uh and then like the other ones i don't know i'll, I'll have to give this a few more listens and uh, up update you guys later which i always do uh, except I haven't because I have been slacking on that and I need to just make my video talking about all the albums I listen to and how what I think of them now. Anyway, overall super solid album. I loved it. Can I not bump my mic, please, for the love of all things that are good? I need to not bump this. Anyway, great album. Very solid album. Uh, if you are new to my channel, I have my own little ranking system. I don't rank it like 1 through 10. I have six little categories and you're about to see them now. I'm going to rank this banger. This one's super solid. I really, really enjoyed it. Overall, very good. It has some things I don't like about it. I think Good Riddance is a better album overall. But I don't know. This one's still super, super solid. I still really enjoyed it. Alrighty. I think that's going to do it for this video. If you like this video, leave it a like. Comment what you think about this. Let me know. I know some of my community is going to be a bit weirded out. Like, what am I doing reviewing this album? I don't care. I'm going to review whatever music I like. So if a, a new artist that, or, or not a new artist, if an artist that I like drops a new album, I'm going to listen to it. Doesn't matter what genre it is. So deal with it. <laughs> if you don't like it, I don't care. This is what I'm doing. I'm doing music I like. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you on my next video. Be sure to interact with this video somehow to support me and the algorithm. Thank you. Appreciate it. Links to my social medias, Patreon, Twitch, Discord, um, Instagram, all that stuff's down in the description. Go check that out. Click on the link tree if you want to also see all of it in one place. And check out my two little playlists on Spotify. There's a heavy music playlist again, and there's one that is a little bit less heavy. Some mostly non-metal music in there. Really cool stuff, though. Go check that out if you want to see what I like, what I'm listening to currently. That's just like a compilation of all of my favorite songs that I've listened to over the years. And I'll check y'all. Uh, I don't know. I can't speak. I'll see y'all in my next video. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Appreciate the support. Catch you later. Love y'all. Peace out.